Alright, welcome to my worm bin, and soon to be worm bins. This was a worm bin that I inherited from someone. I didn't originally start it myself. Hey everyone, and welcome. You're probably wondering, why are we watching this old video? Well, the main reason is that uh, I just wanted you to sort of take note of the day there. The, the date is November 9th, 2017. But if you look really closely at the, uh, the upload date on that uh, particular video, you'll see that that was actually uploaded in the wee hours of the morning on the 9th at around 1.30 in the morning. Um, it's because the footage was prepared on November 8th. And uh, today is November 8th, so uh, November 8th, 2019. So yeah, today is my vermiversary. <laughs> Again, two years since I started preparing videos about worm composting. So, um, you know, I guess just to bring a few other things to, to light here. Um, I had no idea that it would really grow to this when I first started, when I first created that first video. So um, one thing that's really kind of surprising is the number of subscribers. Look at all those subscribers. Definitely uh, very surprising to see that I'm almost at 5,000 subscribers. Um, if you look at the playlist that I add all these videos to, then over here too, you'll notice 149 videos already. So this will actually be my 150th video, which is pretty surprising as well. Um, and then if you go to the dashboard, the YouTube Studio dashboard, uh, the other pretty remarkable thing is the number of views that my channel has received. So it's coming up on 2,500,000, pretty close to 2.5 million views. So um, this is just a quick shout out and a thank you to everyone who's watched my videos and who's subscribed to my channel and has um, provided words of encouragement and positive feedback. I thank you all for continuing to tune in and support my channel. I really appreciate all of you and... Um, let's not leave it at that. Let's head down to my wormery and let's take a quick peek at what I've got going on down there. Okay, so I guess the first hint at what's happening down here is this. These lights don't remain lit for no reason. This is my uh, filming station for my, my time-lapse videos. And uh, you might have guessed that I'm in the process of setting up a new time lapse. Let's go take a peek. All right, so what we have behind me is my typical setup, which includes the, the Nikon camera. In the past, I've done time lapse videos using GoPros, but um, I specifically bought the Nikon camera so that I can do um, slightly better, slightly higher quality time-lapse videos with a greater degree of control over the footage. And as we start to zoom in a little bit closer over here at what the subject is, you might recognize that container. That container is the same sort of container that the crazy the worm lady, uh, Emily, had featured once upon a time on her channel. And she just did a little comparison of um, how different things look in three different chambers. Um, and she actually extracted the contents to compare and contrast what was going on there. And I had really uh, taken a shine to that container because at that time I was in the process of sort of fabricating my own three chamber time lapse bin. And, um, and believe it or not, she went up to Amazon placed an order for this and sent me one. So thank you, Emily. That's really cool. And the one thing I guess um, is a little bit lame is that I've been hanging on to this thing for months and months. <laughs> um, dawdling, wasting time, and it's high time that I got to work on uh, setting up this video. So um, the one thing you'll notice here is there's a whole bunch of Paper, to paper towel and toilet paper rolls here and um, it is quite a collection and it took a little doing to collect those if you know what I mean um, and uh, and it was mainly because I'm attempting to sort of create a little bit of a spacer here and if you look down from above into the container 
the whole idea was that I wanted the worms to focus on being near the, the front glass and uh, that was the main reason I wanted to put sort of material things that they can't really cruise into in the back so that when the the video is being filmed from this side here the majority of the worms will be up against that surface so that we can observe them rather than them you know working their way to the back side where they're not visible so um, I'm gonna start putting this thing together and uh, we're gonna launch it off with some worms all right, so now what I've done here is I've uh, taken these rolls, these toilet paper rolls and paper towel rolls, and I've stuffed them full with shredded paper, just copy paper out of the printer, kind of bad prints and junk mail and stuff like that, mostly just white paper. And, um, and I've stuffed the, the rolls with paper. And I just threw a little rubber band around them to keep them sort of together to sort of shape, create a shape that I want to use as that insert that I showed earlier. And uh, they're soaking. So the whole thing is just kind of resting here in water to let it all get damp. And, um, and that's part one, I guess. That's the backing that's going to try to help keep the worms near the, the front surface of the glass so that they uh, remain in view of the camera. So that part is done. Now I've got to get on to creating some of the filler materials. So now every good video needs a theme. And in the past I've always used, you know, fresh vegetables and, um, you know, kind of a, a high nitrogen content sort of a feeding approach to my time lapses. And I figured, let's try an all carbon approach. So I think what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to have one chamber set up with a uh, cardboard. So I went around and I tried to select uh, various different colors of cardboard I had around and hack them up into little bits. So this will be used to fill in one of the chambers. I'd like to use um, another chamber for just paper, you know, newspaper and just um, shredded copy paper. Um, so that'll be the second chamber. And then I think the third carbon chamber will be... Uh, um, leaves and cocoa core. So I'll be I'll be thinking about this as I continue prepping the materials and we'll see what else I come up with. This is the water that the rolls were soaking in. So we'll just drop it in here and if it's not enough water to hydrate all of this cocoa core I could always add a little bit more later. But I didn't want to over dampen it so let's give that a little time to soak in. Alright, so now when it comes to leaves, I don't really have much of a variety. I have my normal leafy matter that's in my leaf box here. And then I've got some stuff here that I had at one point ground up into a pretty fine material. And I just figured just to make it not all look so bland, I just took some of these leaves off the tomatoes that I had cut down yesterday. And I, I don't know if it's really keeping to the carbon only approach by doing this. But I figured it would be a nice little splash of color and um, whatever. Maybe there's a little dash of uh, extra nitrogen in there to beef up this particular chamber. But I figured it would also add to the, the color a little bit and make it look less boring. So these are going to be my leaves for the second chamber. And I guess to finish off, this will be the third chamber, which will be more fine paper. There's that one chamber that has the cardboard in it. But then this is also in that same sort of category of carbon paper-ish sort of material. But this is regular paper, you know, copy paper, um, printer paper. This is hacked up uh, shredded newspaper. And um, this is stuff, this stuff kind of looks like paper bag material, but it's a little bit more fine. I believe it came as packing material in some sort of a package that arrived recently. So these seemed like, um, again... Uh, at least three different varieties so I can kind of create a sort of a layered appearance that's not so boring. And then um, this will be the paper layer. The cocoa core looks pretty good now. I went um, 
I went ahead and I ringed it out, wrung it out. I tried to squeeze out as much moisture as I could so it's not sopping wet. And it still sits here on a little bit of an angle to allow it to drain a bit and dry off a bit. But it's nice and damp. But wouldn't you know it, I was just rummaging around on my shelf looking for a container to use and uh, look what I found. A whole other container full of cocoa core. <laughs> so now it looks like I'm in surplus mode with cocoa core. That's okay. We'll figure out something to do with it. As I prepare to load up each of the compartments, I created these little shields. And the whole idea was that um, I can kind of protect this forward facing panel so that it doesn't get all smeared and smudged up with different bits of stuff, you know, like little leafy bits and everything. This way I can build up the whole um, series of layers inside the container protecting this front glass and then I could just pull this out at the end. Um, maybe even just kind of go one step at a time, you know, maybe put the first layer in and then lift it up and build the second layer, lift it up. So still, you know, um, the whole idea being that I don't want to have like just stuff scattered all over the front glass as I layer it up. I'd like it to be clear in terms of, you know, the different layers and colors that are in there to try to make it look nice, no other reason. All right, so we're going to take one of these spacer contraptions that I made. Just remove the rubber band that was holding it all together. And then we're going to gently place it right down into here. Again, the main reason for that was just to minimize the space in here so that the worms can't make their way all the way to the back of the chamber. I'm trying to keep them in the front, keep them within view of the camera. So I just created this little top piece over here to go on top. This is kind of wide and I think that one was made to fit right into this one. So this one is probably going to be the second one. These other two are it's strange because this chamber is just a little bit um, wider than the other two chambers for some reason. So I, uh, I guess I just wanted to sort of create a sort of a little bit of a lid if you will just so that um, Again, just to try to keep the worms from venturing into there. Not that it would be a problem, because everything in there is edible from their point of view. It's just paper. But um, I wanted to be able to top cap those off so the worms won't go down into those as well. So I'm just going to position all three of these now. Okay, that's pretty good. I like the way that looks. Okay, let's start building the first chamber. So now the first chamber I believe I'm going to make out of the leaves. So I think I'll just start with the, the coarse, large chunks of leaves start dropping in leaves. So let's try lifting this up here a little bit to see what we get. This might actually end up being a pretty good tool for pushing things down too. So we'll just put this here as sort of the guard. 
like so. And then we'll go with the next layer, which I believe, I don't know, let's see, why don't we use um, cocoa core? We'll put a little thin layer of dark cocoa core in there. So now here's the cocoa core layer. Yeah, I like using this tool. This is pretty cool. It's creating this nice little level surface between the layers. So I like that. So now I guess maybe uh, maybe the next cool color to add would be uh, some of this green, some of this fresh leafy material. I'm trying to pick ones that look kind of nicer, a little brighter in color. A white a piece of white cardboard is covering up all the uh, all the work I'm doing. <laughs> Okay, just drop in a little bit more and then we'll try to lift up the cardboard and see how it looks underneath. So we can come up with a nice level layer for that particular color. Yeah, that's pretty good. We'll put this back down here, like so. And we'll go to the next level. And, um, you know, I don't know if this is going to be much different. This is just more leaves, but these are the finely chopped leaves, as opposed to what's on the bottom. Those are the, um, those are the more coarse whole leaves, almost whole leaves. This stuff is almost like dust, though, so I'm sure the worms are going to dig it. Let's see how that layer turned out. Eh, not bad. I don't want to push on it too much because I feel like it might actually send it, you know, falling down into the green layer even more. So I don't want that to happen. I think, why don't we put another cocoa core layer in here? And then maybe another fresh green leaf layer. turned out the cocoa core forms so nicely to create the nice even layer nice level layer there except some of the smudge stuff on the um, cardboard is sort of smudging a little bit which was what it was intended to avoid. So maybe I'll turn it upside down now. Here's the more dry end of it. And uh, yeah, what did we say before? Let's try to put some more of the green layer in here. And then maybe we'll just top off with some of the more coarse whole leaves on the tippy top. Oops. pretty good and um, so I think all I'll do now is just lay in a another layer of the coarse dry leaves on top the same stuff we started with at the very beginning and then we'll be done with this one this first layer here or this first chamber not layer I also don't want to have the material so high up that the worms might be tempted to go wandering, you know, out of their given chamber into a neighboring chamber. Not that that would be a big problem. It would be nice if the worms stayed where I put them. So how does that look? I think that looks pretty nice. I'm sure it's just a matter of time before all of this stuff starts to settle down anyway. 
So I think that's a pretty good, uh, pretty good level. Almost to the top, but definitely not all the way up to the top. All right, let's get on to the second chamber. Now we're on to the cardboard chamber, all the different colors of cardboard. So I've already um, prepped, oop, I already prepped um, the first color. We're gonna start with this boring tan, I guess, color. And uh, it's a little bit snug, but whatever. So I, um, I've got this stuff soaking here. It's nice and damp. So I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna try to wring it out though before I drop it in there. I don't wanna have anything, you know, dripping or, you know, dropping uh, water into the container. This container has no, um, no drainage, no drainage holes. So, oops, I'm, uh, I'm just a little concerned. I don't wanna have too much moisture in the bin. The, uh, the spacers that we have in the back are already providing a fair amount of moisture, I would think. I want to be able to wring the water, you know, moisture out of it. So I'm just giving it a good little squeeze and letting the majority of the moisture of it just drip out. All right, let's see how that looks. <laughs> this might be the better tool over here to get it down into position. Yeah. Maybe this stuff isn't going to create such nice even levels and layers, but we'll see. All right, let's get the next uh, let's get the next color ready to go. As you might be able to see here, the um, there's a, a certain amount of like you know condensation gathering over here on the um, on the on the pane on the on the pl on the surface of the plastic, and I don't know if that's going to vanish. I would really hope it does, and and it's for that reason I was wondering if maybe there's too much moisture in here or I'm not sure what could be causing this. Um, let's use this more narrow piece. I can control it better. Um, I really would prefer not to see condensation like that on the surface. So I'm kind of hoping that it dissipates over time. But I guess my, my thinking with that was that maybe if I were to use just dry pieces, I figured the next layer might be this pink stuff. Um, maybe that would help draw some of that that um, water vapor up uh, away from that lower layer. And, um, and so for that reason, I figured maybe I would go with a dry layer next to sort of help it, uh, maybe to help it attract some of the, um, some of that moisture that's condensing on the surface of the the bin here. Um, I was doing my best to kind of crinkle each of these pieces of cardboard up so that they don't end up kind of laying down next to each other and matting against each other. And um, and I was also trying to fold them in a way that the, the colorful side remains out because the back side of all of these colorful pieces of cardboard are just your you know basic brown cardboard so uh, this is how I try to you know uh, get as much of the the color visible for each of these layers so let's um let's just try this and see what happens you know I'm, so, all right, why don't we make that into the pink layer? Got a few pair pieces of extra. So the white cardboard, oops, there I go spilling it again. The white cardboard is once again, not as white as um, <laughs> I had hoped it would be, because it's, uh, well, it's unfolding, showing the brown side of it. And when even when it's, um, when you look at the you know the white it looks a little bit more like gray or something but who knows maybe it'll look better later but since they're kind of unfolding from being wet i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to wring it out but before i drop them in there i'm going to see if i could refold them to try to you know put the brown side in and um have the white side facing out so it looks like a white layer drop these in here in such a way that the white is showing. I'm 
I mean, here in this in this section, we don't have a lot of like fine particle matter like we did over here. So I'm not using these shields. It doesn't seem necessary to do so. And if I do smudge anything on the on the surface of the the um, of the container, it's really just going to be water. So it shouldn't be a problem in terms of messing up the nice clean surface. be the white layer. I was wondering if I should alternate another another dry layer before I put another wet layer in. I might do that. Yeah, why don't we try it that way? Okay. The next layer is gonna be blue. My mom came by for dinner, but it was my buddy Alex. Who came by to visit who actually treated us for pizza so uh, thank you Alex all right so like I said damp dry damp we're gonna go with dry on these blue pieces let's see how that goes you try to orient them in a way that most of the blue is showing not so much the brown if possible think what's the next I guess we have yellow that's about it and I have a fair amount of the yellow so maybe the yellow will just go in here to top it all off and that'll be the the entirety of it all right so we're back to using dampened pieces but on on these I just decided I'm not going to bother trying to uh, crinkle them up fold them all up in, in advance while they're still dry it just seemed while while they're nice and damp they're just much easier to manipulate so I figured I would wet them down first and then try to shape them. It's a huge difference doing it that way. Does seem like we're kind of at the right level. All right, good enough. And for the paper layer, I'm going to start with shredded newspaper, newsprint, and I've um, I just took. I'm going to start with a dry layer to begin with, and then we'll put a damp layer on top of that. So I've just taken a handful of it and I crumbled it together like into a little meatball. So I'm going to just drop those right down into the bottom. here. Maybe this one can fit right in here. Why don't we use this to try to create sort of a level a level line up against the glass. All right. So that'll be the newsprint. Now on top of that, I kind of did the same thing. I took the uh, the shredded uh, copy paper, a printer paper, um, but this is um, sitting in water, so it's dampened. So this stuff is um, going to be a damp layer, resting right on top. You know what? Why don't we put the barrier wall in here? 
like we did earlier and see if that helps keep the moisture from getting splattered all over the, the surface of the glass. Okay, let's start lifting this up to see how that looks. Well, not a great deal of difference between the two. You can sort of make out the fact that the lower level is a bit darker, the newsprint is a bit darker than the copy paper. So whatever, we'll take it. And um, since this was a wet layer, why don't we put a dry layer on top of that with the next one. Alright, so now this layer here is that stuff that kind of looks like paper bag type paper. You know, it's color and everything, but it's much finer. It's a much finer, thinner ma uh, material, paper. Um, I believe it came as like the filler in a package, some sort of packaging sort of um, material, kind of paper that you sort of crumble up and wrap it around your, your parcel. So I think since it's um, nice and fine and thin, they might even like it better than if it were a uh, paper bag material. So here we are, we're alternating again though, because we started with a dry layer on the bottom. We, um, we put in dampened white paper here, but then um, this is dry again now, as you can hear from me crumbling it around. So try to establish sort of a level layer here before we get to the next level. I guess the next layer will also probably be wet. And you know, it just occurred to me I got a whole bunch of coffee filters, so I thought coffee filter material will be the good next layer to put in here. So let's go grab some of that. Alright, so on second thought, I figured I would do the, um, the coffee filters dry, because then what we could use to wrap up with would be more of this, um, this crumbled up copy paper that's already like in little balls and it's already dampened. So I might as well use this on the top layer. So I'm going to put this as the top layer, which is damp. But we'll do another dry layer here with the coffee filters. And here too, we'll just kind of, you know, roll them up a little bit. There's not a lot of difference in the color here in terms of the in terms of this uh, this packaging paper here and the coffee filter paper. They look very alike. I must admit. It almost looks like the uh, it almost looks like that material that the packaging material. Oh whatever. It looks like we got a couple little layers happening in here. And I'll just kind of loosely place this one back here as well. Cause now what we have remaining is some more of this copy paper. Nice bright white copy paper. So um, here again, I'm not really shooting for the perfect edge. Just do the best we can here. Create a little bit better a straight edge, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, you might be able to tell that it's been a while since I've been working on it now. Even though I stopped the camera here and there to prep certain aspects of this and work on stuff. This has been happening for a couple hours now, so I'm getting a little bit tired. Definitely ready to take a break here. Probably go eat some dinner and come back and try to get this thing set up with the camera and the worms and into the time-lapse mode. But before dinner, I just wanted to get this at least to the point where it's built. That's about what we want. Alrighty. No moisture left in here. So, looks pretty good. The levels are almost all equal. Let's 
pretty good little kind of layered patterns in each one. It'll be interesting to see how we uh, how things progress once we actually get some worms in here. So I think it's break time. I'm gonna go get myself some dinner. I'll try to get back to this in a little while, in a few hours. Okay, well, it's fast forward a couple hours. Got myself some yummy dinner. And I did a little bit of tidying up around here. I took care of a few other odds and ends, so I think it's time to position this thing in its, uh, in its little cubby hole. Start getting things plugged into power supply and uh, do a couple exposure tests. The settings are all in place on the camera now. Um, going to be shooting every two minutes. There's going to be a two minute interval on the time lapse and um, I don't know for anyone who's interested the f-stop is f11 the ISO setting is 100 the exposure is 30 seconds and so far with the few test shots that I've taken I like the results so why don't we shoot one now alright so the 30 seconds should be coming up now any second so if we come in a little closer to see what the resulting image looks like it's going to give us a little preview there it's kind of hard to see it's a little uh, the lighting's really stinky but as far as I'm concerned the preview looks pretty good those glares are just uh, glares from the light that I'm holding without me holding this light here in my hand the image actually looks pretty good so now we're back down just to the generic preview prior to the image being taken so um, I'm gonna clear the format on the chip so we start out with a fresh capacity on the card um, I've got the zoom and the focus locked off sort of with a piece of tape and um, the only thing remaining is to get the worms in there but I usually want to get the time-lapse started a little bit in advance just sort of let it run, sort of let the, um, the material in the bin settle a little bit, and then introduce the worms after a couple seconds of that. So I'm actually going to get this thing started now and get the worms in here momentarily. Well, not momentarily, but, um, you know, in a little while. It's getting late, though, so I don't want to be up all night doing this. <laughs> it's about 10 o'clock already. I've been working on this all day. Whew, crazy. All right, well, I've got one of my worm bins here, and I've got a container that I could try to put a big bunch of the worms into. And then I figured if I just use three cups that are about this size with a good heaping number of worms in each, that would be a good quantity to, ch to start each chamber of the time lapse with, I believe. So um, it's getting late now. It's already past 11 o'clock at night, and I'd really like to um, get this thing started and... Uh, call it a day so <laughs> I'm just gonna uh, put my glove on try to scoop a bunch of worms out of this thing and get these three containers ready to go to launch worms into the time-lapse all right well that was fun it's unfortunate that I really didn't have enough time to capture it on camera but I've got my volunteers yeah I think we've got a pretty good number of um, willing subjects undertake this new mission but you know what just in case I've got too many I'm gonna leave this bin out just so I can pick off as many as I need to fill up these these three cups and the rest can go back in yeah it's coming along pretty good it's two heaping cups full of worms let's get the third one filled up okay it's showtime boys it's quarter to twelve and I'm ready to go to bed and call it a day. But it's time for these little guys to go to work. It looks like it's only about 20 seconds before it takes the next image. So I'll let that go quickly. And after that next image snaps, I'll release the worms. Okay. 
Okay. It's taking some pretty nice pictures. So I've got about a minute and a half to let these little guys loose. Batch number one. Batch number two. Batch number three. Okay. Let's just remove these cups. Let the worms go to town. So it begins. I think I'm done for the day. So let's let this thing continue. And like I always like to say, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Because I always really appreciate that. And also consider being a subscriber to the channel. Because that's really appreciated as well. Alright everyone, thanks for watching. Bye now.